to the podcast where we introduce you to incredible humans who share their journeys with the mission to inspire you to harness your own inner tenacity to drive your life and career forward. And now, your host, Adam Posner. So let's get it going here. The last time uh, uh, John Baldino and I spoke, he was at an airport. Where were you flying to? You remember oh my that? gosh. Yeah, I was flying to, I think I was flying home. I think I was going back to Florida. Yeah, and I think you were sitting on the floor of some airport. Yes, right out Chicago of- or something. I don't even remember. You kinda, you yes. Kinda, he is a, the, the CEO of Umariso. Did I say that right? Umariso. Umariso. Italian. Umariso. Yes, hey, that's gabagool. right. Okay, tell us. Tell us. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker. I'm allowed to say that over here. Gabagol. No, for real. Um. Tell us who you are, what you do best, and give us a little bit of the origin story. Oh my goodness. So I've been in the human- We have to get closer here to actually hear you. How are we doing? Yes. Okay. So I've been in the (laughs) HR space for 30 plus years. Uh, Started actually in retail and personnel. And uh, it's been a good run. Um, And so for the last 12, I've been in uh, HR consulting. So run Humoriso as a consulting firm. It's not just me. Uh, and so have about 35 employees and we're doing work all over the country and some international. What type of consulting? Let's get a little granular there. Why, yeah. why, what problems are companies having that they need to bring you guys in for a solution? So uh, it's an interesting question. It runs the gamut, right? So from the tactical, transactional, so HR experience as far as the employee life cycle, payroll, leave management, all that stuff. Um, and then uh, on through direct hire recruiting, HR technology selection, but then uh, to the OD side of the world, right? Mergers and acquisitions, uh, all of that, um, as well as inclusion and equity work, executive coaching, runs the gamut. So a lot of projects. So let's talk a little bit about your journey as a people leader. What have you learned about yourself at this stage of your career of how to build and grow teams that you're now having to practice what you preach and practice what you sell as a consultant yeah i mean i I think a couple of things one uh hr has to be nimble and so as a leader i have to be responsive in a responsible way which sounds funny but i have to be responsive in a responsible way what does that mean it means that i should have some forecasting skills i got to be able to have a sense of sort of reading the tea leaves what's coming at least a general idea so that I can prep for the organization's response. I feel very responsible for the 30 some people that work for me as I should. Of course. Um, and I think it overlaps into the way in which we pro- provide support for our clients. Right. They've got to be able to do the same thing and their HR teams may need support in that. C-suite certainly needs support in that. So I would say that activates a lot for me. Well, it's interesting you say that because you, you, you emphasize the importance of embracing the past for a healthier future. Yeah. And I think that mindset really plays into that. But when you say that, I mean, I have it in bold here for a reason. Why does that statement, you know, hit so deep with you? Because I think that there are a lot of people, and I mean this broadly, there's a lot of people who are, who are mired by the past. And, and so they may have learned some things from it, but they stay there. So you'll talk to, to be very practical, you'll talk to HR leaders and they're talking about things from 20 years ago and what they learned from that 20 years ago, but they really haven't really grown from 20 years ago. They're not, okay, so now as a result of knowing that, what does today look like? Exactly. And that's, that's a skill set. So and so to look to the future, we have to teach people how to do that. Yeah, absolutely, too. So let's, let's kind of talk about that for a little bit from a tactical perspective, the whole concept of, rem- of remote work. How have you been working with clients? And we're not looking for any specific team, here, but like some of those kind of uh, old Star Wars kind of clients that had a real trouble pivoting at the beginning of COVID. Yeah. And how some of them embrace it for a positive and how some of them have not. And they've, you know, unfortunately, uh, well, faltered. I think, first of all, HR has done a, a disservice to uh, some organizations because we've created sort of a caste system. Jobs that allow you to work remotely are better than jobs that don't allow you to work remotely. Uh, let's pause on that for a second. That's such a... 
<laughs> some people actually like and succeed and do better in an office because that's what they're wired for. And yes. some people, I thought, think it's also a bias. Not everybody has a cushy third bedroom they could use. That's office. right. There's so many people that are in small apartments, whatever their socioeconomic situation is, yep. that are stuck with cats, dogs, kids, yep. spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends. Yes. And maybe even, dare I say it, in a toxic environment where it may not be... They don't want you to come into their home. Exactly. And and that has to be okay. Listen, it was different when, when the pandemic was first, you know, on us. Right. March of 2020, everyone just sort of went into responsive mode. It just was what it was. As we should have. But two years later, three years later, four years later, at some point, it's like some of those jobs have to be done in person. I, I It cracks me up when I talk to HR leaders and they're like, no, 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 no. If we're going to find good talent, it has to be a distributed workforce. And I'm like, okay, can I ask you a question? Yes. What happened for dinner last night for you? Oh my gosh, I got home late. And so I did a, I did DoorDash and I'm like, ask the people at DoorDash if they can work remotely. Yeah. They got to go to the restaurant that you're not going to. Right. They're putting themselves at risk. That's right. And so to, to make it sound like some jobs are better than others is a wrong way to do it. And I think we're suffering a little because we did that. You know, it's a, it's a really unique, because I call it the recal. First, it was a great resi- great resignation, which I really didn't buy into. Yeah. I didn't buy into that. But what I call this time right now, and I think we had this conversation, I call this a great recalibration. A couple of things are happening out there. Binge hiring, cheap money, massive layoffs. Folks that were getting these exorbitant salaries were, were so over the top. And now we're getting to a point now where everyone's kind of getting back on track here. Yep. And they're not getting those salaries. And they're like, you know what? And you want me to come back to the office? What are you seeing out there? Yeah, I mean, but I I will also take a step back, though, to say if it's down to an antagonism, there's a lot of other issues happening there as well. So if it's if it's a well, you owe me if I'm coming to the office that that relate that work relationship was already built on something too transactional. There was not space for transformative interaction. And so if you've got somebody at that level, quite frankly, I would tell them, yep, we do want you to come back. If that's not for you, we totally understand. I wouldn't put a lot of time into it. Let them go and find their thing. Now, uh, from a hot take perspective, trend wise, what gets you excited these days in the world? It's very broad. I mean, listen, I mean, tons. You could, you could put your finger in the air right here at this event and conference and see what's there's, happening out there. There's a ton of stuff that gets me excited. I would say two things. One. I'm not afraid of generative AI. And We're going so to work I'm, with it, not against that's it. That's right. And I think, w- quite frankly, there's some HR practitioners who are in a department of one who need that help. And so let's not, you know, get it get it twisted that it's taking jobs away from people. Listen, we got 9 million jobs available, 6.3 million people on unemployment. We don't have enough people to work all the open jobs. It's We, right. we have to figure out other ways to do things. Right. And you know what? If some people aren't going to take the jobs, we got to figure a way to get that function done. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and the other thing I think that gets me excited is um, there's a lot of space for innovation, which I know sounds sort of like trite. But what I mean by that is like we're here at Transform. You could go up to half a dozen people and talk about if you had this problem to solve, what are the ways in which you might approach it? There's some rich responses coming from that question. So much knowledge. And so that allows for innovation to be you know, activated and responded to and put into place. And so we're in a good time for that because people are hungry to see how can we do things differently? How do we do things better? And so I'm, I'm a little bit almost thankful for the pandemic in that regard because it costs a lot of companies to have corporate self-awareness. And those that are recognizing that are the ability to transform, pun intended. Yep. And the rest of them are kind of going to be a dying breed. What scares you? What keeps you up at night? Well, I think companies that are unwise about um, compliance. I mean, we have a, a distributed workforce. I, we are still running into companies that are like, yeah, this is what we do. And I'm like, you have three people working in California. They're like, yeah, I'm like. You can't do that in California. There's some, some major tax and compliance laws going on. I mean, there. tons. And I know that sounds silly, but honestly, it's the compliance components that will undo your best efforts in creativity and culture. Yeah. It'll all come apart. It's interesting. So we're going to wrap it up here, and I'm going to ask you. Um, it's a question. I actually haven't asked this question yet, but I ask this on every podcast. You're a 
a scholar, a gentleman, a worldly man. What is the single greatest piece of advice that you've ever received that you take action on every day? It could be a mantra, something you wake up saying. Yeah, to get to easy. You. Choose your battles. My wife says that to me every day. Choose your battles. <laughs> and I heard that when I was in college. And and it hit me. Because I, I, a big part of it is because I needed to prove myself. And so everything was a battle. Because I wanted to be heard and no one was going to, because I felt like I was stifled uh, a bit growing up. And so when I was in college, I was like, hey, everybody's going to listen to me. And so I was antagonistic. And now looking back on that, how thankful you are for taking that advice. Oh, heart. yeah. And like defining who you are and what you stand for. Um, John, I want to thank you. I wish you had more time to keep everything going here. We're competing against the award show and this wonderful placement of this podcast booth. I mean, it's <laughs> talk about some, so when there's that feedback uh, box, the comment, leave a leave a comment. That's on the way right. Out. Suggestion I'm box. Gonna just stick that right. That's on. right. I'm going to fill that in there. But uh, John, tell us where folks could find you. Where could they learn more? Where could they connect? Thanks, Adam. So obviously, humoriso.com or John Baldino HR on LinkedIn. Awesome. I want to thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your conference. And uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Out yes, sir. Tonight. Thanks, Adam. Over the last three years, how much market volatility have you experienced in your business? How many times have you had to hire quickly only to find yourself in a position a few months later with not enough roles to keep your recruitment team busy? Now, what if you could work with a flexible recruitment partner that you could scale up and down based on your needs without compromising on quality or culture? The good news is that solution is finally here. Matcher is a tech-enabled RPO player that made its mark in Europe and is now taking over the US by storm. Matcher combines technology, experience, and flexibility for startups, scale-ups, and corporates to quickly deliver on their hiring needs. Now, whether you're hiring across engineering, go-to-market, or GNA, Matcher got you covered. That's why Matcher's embedded sourcing, coordination, and recruiting services are trusted by companies like TikTok, Booking.com, Miro, Grammarly, Stripe, and more. To find out how Matcher can be your flexible recruitment partner, visit matcher.io. That's M A T C H R.io. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on the podcast. Thanks. Wisdom is forever, but for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode soon jam-packed with more incredible humans. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and sharing. To join the conversation, search The Pausecast on LinkedIn. And to catch up on past episodes and more info, please visit www.thepausecast.com. <laughs>